educative video of microsurgical management of bilateral C2 dumbbell neurofibromas in neurofibromatosis type 2. This 38 years gentleman presented with the pain in the neck, difficulty in walking, had multiple skin neurocutaneous markers all over the body with neurofibromas. He had a spastic quadriparesis, weakness all four limbs 3 by 5 with the gait ataxia. With this, he was investigated with the MRI scan, contrast whole spine, CT angiography, and bilateral carotid and vertebral angiography. The MRI showed bilateral C2 dumbbell neurofibroma, significant pressure on the cervical spinal cord at C2 from both sides, with the cord being pinched and significant pressure. And these are the MRI scan images, axial, sagittal, and coronal images. Whatever angiography was unremarkable, artery was not involved or displaced with the tumors. He underwent microsurgery, prone position, midline incisions up to C3, exposure of both C1, C2 bilaterally up to lateral joints. First C2 neurofibroma root was exp exposed and excised on the right side. Then similar procedure was done on the left side. These are the exposures. The basic occiput is exposed, C1 posterior arch is exposed, and C2 laminae are exposed up to the lateral mass. They are separated from the dural tube, and both the roots, C2 roots on the right side as well as the left side are exposed. The C2 spinous process is removed and C2 laminectomy is done on both sides and C1 posterior arch is removed to expose the roots completely up to the lateral mass as shown here. The roots are released are grossly enlarged with the neurofibroma formation and these are under high illumination and magnification. The lateral part of C2 laminae is taken out up to the facet joints and a similar procedure is done on the C1 posterior arch up to the lateral mass and the tumor is exposed completely on both sides. This is very important to expose the lesion so that we can excise it comfortably and go superiorly into the dura and see if it is inside the dura and we can excise it. The lateral masses are drilled and exposed up to the intervertebral foramen where the root exits till there we need to follow the roots so that we can take off the tumor completely. Once the comfortable bony work is done that is the C1 posterior arch removal up to the lateral mass and C2 laminectomy up to the lateral mass. The whole root of C2 is exposed on both sides. Now the C1 arch, posterior arch on the left side is drilled up to the lateral mass and the C2 nerve root on the left side is exposed from its origin till it goes out of the intervertebral foramen. Once that is done, the dissection of the tumor is started. The fibrous covering of the tumor capsule or the root is exposed up to the dural tube. Now I want you to see the tumor situated in the C1-C2 mass and significantly pressing on the dural tube. That is the origin of the tumor from the C2 on the left side. Now the, the proximal part of the root is coagulated on the surface. The blood vessels on the surface of the root are coagulated and devascularized. Now, once we do that, the fibrous tissue into the intraoral foramen and C1, C2 are released and the root along with the tumor is released inside the space between C1 and C2 laterally. This is the release of the fibrous tissue and the root along with the tumor and the root. Now I want you to see the normal root exiting out through the intraoral foramen. That's the mother root of C2 on the left side. That's the root, mother root, where the tumor is not there. Distally to this is coagulated and root is divided along with the tumor. 
Now, once that is done, there will be some amount of extra dural bleeding into the, into, the floor, into the floor of the tumor. Gently, with a micro hook, the tumor is elevated upwards and the whole root of C2 on the left side is divided and cut from the distal nerve root and it is separated. This should be done till we see the normal nerve root. Once that is done, change the microscope angle and focus it on the exiting C2 nerve root and that is divided and cut. Here during cutting, one needs to be very careful about the extra dural bleeding and, and the vertebral artery portion very near to that. Once it is detached from the intervertebral foramenal level where it goes out, now we focus on the proximal part of the root where it emerges from the dural tube and enters into the intervertebral foramen. That is the proximal end of the C2 nerve root along with the tumor, which is dissected and separated. Now I want you to see the proximal mother root from where the tumor is originating. During the coagulation nearer to the dural tube, our bipolar frequency coagulation should be very low and the suction should be low. All our movements should be away from the dural tube and the spinal cord. That is the proximal end of the C2 nerve root emerging from the spinal cord and the tumor is attached to that. Now you go proximally as much as possible and see the root is divided completely from the, from the dural tube and excised. And the tumor doesn't extend into the dura, so it becomes intradural. Here it appears to be completely extradural and I want you to see the C2 nerve root fibers from where the tumor is originating. They are coagulated under high liberation and high magnification and cut completely so the dural tube along the, the nerve root along with the tumor is completely excised. That is the proximal attachment of the, of the tumor to the dural tube is divided and cut. Once complete removal is done, now we go on to the right side. This is the right side C2 root. Now the proximally the, the tumor is detached from the nerve root. Again, the same procedure is followed. The fibrous capsule is formulated and hemostasis is achieved. And the fibrous capsule is opened and the root is exposed. This is the fibrous capsule or a pseudo capsule of the nerve root, except if it is open all along the leg till it exits through the intervertebral forearm. No time during the dissection, the dural tube is, is or the bipolar coagulation is carried on to the dural tube. This is very important to avoid injury to the spinal cord because already the spinal cord is pinched and under high, high pressure. This is very important not to touch the dural tube or the cord during the dissection. Now you can see the whole tumor is exposed along with the enlarged nerve root on the right side at the C2. Again, the fibrous tissue is separated. This step of separating the fibrous tissue is very important because the extradural blood vessels veins, they lie outside this fibrous tissue or pseudo capsule. By dissecting inside this fibrous tissue, we can avoid the extradural venous plexus, which is very prominent around C1 and C2 and which may sometimes bleed and give trouble that can be avoided. The micro hook is placed onto the proximal end of the uh, tumor and gently the tumor is pulled down. On this side, I want you to see tumor appears to be going inside the dura and there is a covering of the dura which is going onto the surface and tumor appears to be going inside the dura of the C2 nerve root. Now, once we see that, we need to excise the whole tumor along with the intradural component. Usually, if we cut the dura surrounding the tumor and gently extract, we don't need to open the dura in such cases. We can extract the tumor completely. Intradural part of the tumor also 
provided we open the Dura with very uh, wisely and little more extensively so that the intradural part of the tumor is extracted through this opening only. Subsequently, we can close it. Now, I want you to see we have opened the dura horizontally and the tumor nerve roots are seen very well. Tumor originating from the nerve roots and these nerve roots are non-functional. They can be cut, coagulated and cut under high illumination and magnification. No time the surrounding the, the nerve roots or the cord is touched or, or injured. Now you see the roots are divided from the proximal part. As you keep extracting, the intradural part of the tumor also comes out. As you see very nicely here, the intradural, small part of the tumor was intradural, about one centimeter, has come out extracted. And this now all along the length of the dura, the whole thing, whole tumor is divided and separated and extracted in one piece. That is the mother root from where the tumor is originating, C2 nerve root on that side. Now, that is a posterior attachment of the tumor to the dura mater that is coagulated and divided. All these steps need to be done under high illumination and high magnification. Once that is done, the tumor gets completely detached or separated from the proximal dural side of the, of the tumor and tumor comes out completely and the distal part of the tumor can be comfortably removed. The only problem here would be when it go out, the distal part, one need to be very careful to follow it up to the introtubular foramen outside and at that juncture, you may get a carotid artery and a vertebral artery, one needs to be very careful. Now, I want you to see as we extracted, there's an extra dural bleeding from the, from the surface, from the, uh, the extra dural bleeding from C1 into space, which is coagulated and kept. Now, we are following the tumor outside the intraoral foramen distally. You can see the normal nerve root there. We need to, at least one millimeter of the normal nerve root needs to be included in the excised part so that you, you can prevent the recurrence subsequently. That's the distal normal nerve root going out of the intraoral foramen. Now, the part of the tumor, which is normally about one millimeter distal to the tumor is cut and the fibrous tissue surrounding the tumor is cut and the pseudo capsule is open and the tumor inside the pseudo capsule, as I mentioned to you earlier, is dissected and cut. That's a distal narrow root from where the tumor was originating, is followed into the intraoral foramen and divided and tumor is separated completely. These steps need to be done under high illumination and magnification. That helps us in seeing the bleeders and achieve the hemostasis. Practically, there will not be any blood loss during the surgery. Now, that is the posterior bed of the tumor. Extra venous plexus will be there. We need to stepwise, we need to formulate and divide. That is the posterior end of the tumor and the epidural bleeding, venous bleeding inside the tumor bed between C1 and C2 space. As I mentioned to you earlier, on the right side, the epidural veins are quite a many large veins, which need to be slowly, need to be formulated and divided and you can use the hemostatic agent, cell cell or the gel foam to stop the bleeding or with the totems. Usually, with the slow dissection, you can control the bleeding without any problem under high illumination and magnification, seeing the bleeders and the coagulate. That's the last part of the attachment of the tumor to the C2 nerve root is divided and tumor is taken out completely in one piece, intradural, as well as the extra dural part of the tumor is taken. Once that is done, this is the end stage of surgery. We, the, the dural defect which was created to extract the tumor from the intradural space, we take a small muscle with the fascia from the neck muscles, deeper trapezius group of muscles, and we use it as a graft. That is the entry where the tumor was going inside the dura, and you can see the normal nerve roots 
and a lateral aspect of the spinal part. There is a defect of about 1 cm which is sealed with the fascia, muscle graft and the tissue seal will seal this and stop the postoperative CSF leaks if at all it is going to be there. Now absolute hemostasis is achieved. You can see on both sides the tumor is taken out completely, cord is pulsating well and the wound is closed in three layers. These are the specimen sizes, 3 cm on the right side, 2.5 cm on the left side. The post operative he recovered rapidly within 48 hours. Power came to 5 by 5 and this is our neuroanesthesia team, treating physician and rehab team. Our presence online with more than 575 microsurgical endoscopic navigation guiding Educate your neurosurgical operative posture videos on our YouTube neurosurgical video updates. Thank you very much for viewing.